leaving. Why? Because I refuse to sit around and wait for the villagers to show up and storm the castle. Who's coming after you? Does, does this have anything to do with all the things you've done to JR? You've been talking to him, haven't you? And I'm sure he's told you all sorts of horrible stories about me. The things he said you did to gain custody of little Adam? Or paying Amanda Dillon to make JR drink, dressing her up in babe's clothes to freak him out? Are they true? Yes. Every single one of them. Because I was not about to allow my grandson to be raised by some angry, pathetic drunk. Babe's son, your nephew, deserves a lot better. Well, so if you feel that way, why are you leaving now? Why are you running? Because they turned the tables on me, Marissa. They're out for revenge. Any moment now, the cops are going to come walking through that door, and they're going to arrest me for a murder I did not commit. Well, if, you, if you're innocent, why run? I mean, if you didn't do it, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. <laughs> you know something? You're a sweet kid. But you have a lot to learn about the upstanding citizens of Pine Valley. The people in this town want my head, and they're working overtime to manufacture evidence to use against me, including the chief of police, whom I've pissed off on more than one occasion. Hubbard has planted evidence on me in the past, trying to bring me down, and I can guarantee you that's exactly what he's doing right now. But you've got the truth. You have the law. <laughs> the law. <laughs> wow, that's pretty funny. <sighs> law and I, we haven't exactly had the most honest relationship in the past. I'm afraid I've broken it a few too many times. <sighs> Look, what I did to JR, is nothing compared to my sins of the past. I have seduced men's wives, destroyed marriages. I have developed exotic drugs and used them on people. I have set up others to go to jail in order to get them out of the way. I have lied, cheated, used people, usually vulnerable women. I have manipulated a lot of people's lives in this town, Marissa and I have dashed many a dream. So it's all right. If you feel like running out the door screaming, go right ahead. You wouldn't be the first. If you time it right, you can run into that angry mob and you can borrow one of their pitchforks. I'm not going anywhere. Annie remembers seeing Hayward in the Chandler nursery the night of the murder. She says he had plenty of time to get outside, get to the terrace, pick up the gun that you dropped there, and kill Stuart. Okay, well, Annie's not exactly a reliable witness. She just escaped from a mental institution. Now she's going to, to trial for a list of her own crimes. I mean, do either of you honestly think that she can help out? Maybe not on her own. What do you mean? Jackson's gonna need to get Jake Martin up on the stand, too. Why Jake? because he was here earlier when we found David standing over Annie's bed. Look, Jake told me that David was drugging Adam. David wanted Adam dead because he was keeping the lay from him. But no one's believing that Hayward could drug Adam. No, we don't, we don't have enough to nail him in court, no, because the nurse that took the fall for Hayward has conveniently disappeared. But I mean, come on. Given Hayward's past, it's not hard to imagine that he was drugging Adam. It's just that the drugs weren't working fast enough. I, I don't understand. What is any of this have to do with Annie? Because Annie had Adam up in the attic that night, right? Before the killer could correct his mistake in killing Stuart. So if it is Hayward, he can't be very happy with Annie right now. In fact, maybe he's angry enough to make her pay for it. And she's been locked up this entire time until today she was brought here because she was injured in jail. She's here like five minutes and Hayward is standing over her bed. I mean, come on, it's a little bit suspicious. I know it's not proof positive, but it's a case we can start with to try and prove later. It's a lot of what ifs. Well, it does kind of make sense. I mean, it's not like this is the first time David has drugged people in this town. We need something more concrete, Peyton. Hey, yeah. Just checked out Kendall's story about where she was when somebody tripped over her. We found a footprint. Do you know who it belongs to? Well, that's what I'm working on now. What size shoe do you two wear? Ten and a half. Same here. Well, so far that rules out JR, Adam, Scott, and Stuart, and the two of you. Where does that leave Hayward? That's my next stop. Don't even think about it, Zach. Nobody plays hero. This time, I'm doing things my way. 
Listen, this is complicated as hell. I need facts to leave me, and not your emotions. You want some facts? I'll, I'll give you some facts. I mean, David wanted Adam dead. According to Jake, David was drugging Adam with a very steady, very lethal dose of pills that he mixed up. On top of that, JR said that he caught Hayward trying to break into the Chandler property with a, with a gun, Jesse. Now, Crystal says that he never actually made it onto the property, but I have two witnesses that say he did. Kendall and Annie both saw him there. Now you're telling me you found a footprint right where Kendall said that she, she tripped over David, I mean, right before the murder happened. There is no proof that whoever left this footprint killed Stewart. It only proves that they were there, along with the rest of the town. Okay, now listen, I know that you all want to help Kendall. We all do. The best way to do that is back off and let me do my job. I will be in touch. Look, the only reason I told you all of this is so that you would understand I cannot defend myself here in Pine Valley. Not with the past I've had, not with these people involved. Look, I heard you admit to a lot of ugly things, but you never once mentioned murder. Yes, that's right, because I did not kill Stuart. Well, then stay. Let me help you prove it. You would just be wasting your time. And you'd be gaining a lot of enemies in the process. If you want to help me, just give me a head start before you call the cops. Why should I call the cops? Because you don't want anyone to think that you're on my side. And I do not want you caught up in the middle of this. So you dial 911 after I've left. And you make sure that nobody drags you in there as an accomplice after the fact. No, you shouldn't have to run, not if you're innocent. <laughs> you know, you're right about that, darling. But this is Pine Valley. You'll understand that someday. Thank you. Thank you for offering to help. Be careful. Take care of yourself. I wish things had been different. Yeah, I do too. You going somewhere? What happened? You came to me that night like a guardian angel. I was, I was confused and frightened, really frightened. But you took my hand and led me to safety. I couldn't just leave you there, not in that state. You came to my house to steal your daughter back, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. But you didn't. You saved me. Why? Well, if you remember correctly, you took me once into your home before when nobody else would. Well, I have to be honest about that. Um, a certain amount of pressure from my son, JR, and... Uh, and his late wife. Yeah, but you still let me stay with Emma. And I've never forgotten that. Lucky for me. <laughs> nope. Not Randy. Just Brock. Oh, you don't want to hear from me, do you? Hey, what's wrong with you, man? You really blew it this time. Are you, are you, are you dumb? I mean, what's wrong with you? I've watched you push this woman away for weeks now, and you finally pushed her right outside of that door. Are you happy with that, Frankie? It's funny, because you don't really look too damn happy right now. You know what? Come on. Get your lazy ass out of bed. Because you don't have that much time, and she's probably halfway to the airport by now, so... Let's go. Well, good. Let her go. 